Hi, this is Angela with the Jurassic Coast Trust and I'm here at West Bay today to talk about how the Jurassic Coast Trust protects and conserves the coast. It's such a brilliant day to be out on the coast and I love days like this because the sea has been really whipped up by the wind and you can see it crashing on those cliffs behind me. Joining me today to talk about how we protect and conserve the coast is Sam Scriven and he's the Programme Manager for Heritage and Conservation for the Jurassic Coast Trust. So Sam, thank you for joining me on a day like today. I bet you're glad not to be in the office today. It's fantastic to be out. Thank you for inviting me. So tell me a little bit more about what you do in your job. Well, we have this landscape scale site to look after, which on the one hand means it's very big, 95 miles, but it also means a lot of different people are involved in looking after it, local authorities, different landowners. So a big part of our job is to help them work together to protect the World Heritage Site. That sounds like a really complex job, is it? Oh yes, it is enormously complex. Just Take this bit of coast behind us here. Part of it's owned by the National Trust. It's all within the Dorset area of outstanding natural beauty. It's also a site of special scientific interest and a special area of conservation. So all of that is in the mix with lots of different people involved. But on top of it all, of course, it's also a world heritage site. And that brings with it this unique idea of outstanding universal value, which only world heritage sites have. And that's important for two reasons. First of all, it means this coast is one of the best places in the world to come and learn about rocks and fossils and, and coastal landscapes. So it's really special in that way. But that, that brand, that sort of value that it adds to the coast is also really important to the local economy. So OUV, outstanding universal value, is a good thing for the Jurassic Coast. And it's something which so many sites across the world share. How many World Heritage Sites are there? I think there are over a thousand, aren't there? Yeah, and something we like are that. part of that global family. Yes, it is an enormous global family of literally unique and amazing places. It's incredible. And yeah. we're here standing on it today. Yeah. So we talked about how this site is of global importance. What does it take to look after a place like this? Well, this is the perfect day to come out and ask that question actually because this is all we need to do we need to stand here and let nature do its thing let the coast erode because that's what exposes the geology and the fossils and keeps the landscape evolving and of course that's where we get our outstanding universal value for so really a lot of the time we are helping people to understand that adapting to climate change and adapting to the ongoing change along the coast the ongoing processes that's the best thing for the world heritage site the other really important thing that we do actually is it protects something called the integrity of the World Heritage Site. Now this is what sets it apart from all those other designations that we talked about before. Because if you lose any one piece of the World Heritage Site, the whole thing gets lost. So let's say that this bit of the World Heritage Site was so damaged it couldn't be part of that outstanding universal value anymore. That means that Swanage, right the way at the other end, they'd lose their World Heritage Site too because the whole thing would be lost. So, I mean, that's quite an extraordinary responsibility, you know, to look after a site like this. Surely there are conflicts across the coast. Of course, yeah. How it's managed. Yeah, there are. With the erosion comes natural change. And of course, there's, there are things on the coast that could be damaged by erosion. That is going to bring them into conflict with the World Heritage Site. And in fact, West Bay is going through the process of beefing up its flood defences so we can go and have a look at an issue that's going on right now. So Sam, we talked earlier about conflict on the Jurassic Coast. Is this a place of conflict? Well, yes, it is. Uh, on our left-hand side here, we've got the Raging Sea. And on our right, we've got West Bay. And the only thing between the two of them is this bit of beach here. It's called East Beach locally, but is confusingly the western end <laughs> of Chesil Beach, which is an enormous structure, 17 miles long, running all the way to Portland. And so what is the conflict here? I mean, is, I mean, to me, just looking at this beautiful natural coastline, everything seems all right on a day like this. <laughs> oh, it does, doesn't it? But if you were to come here in a really, really bad storm, what you might see is the sea starting to demolish this beach. Now, that's not anything bad necessarily for a beach. They come and go. The sea strips parts away, then it brings it back when it's calmer. The problem here is, like I said before, if the beach gets lowered too much in a storm, then there's nothing to stop the sea going in and flooding West Bay behind. And it's something that the Environment Agency are really worried about. And that sounds really dreadful, particularly for the businesses and residents in West Bay. Yes, it could be. And for that reason, the Environment Agency have actually been looking after this little section of beach here, East Beach, for uh, a number of years, a long time actually before we got World Heritage status. So in a way, 
although nature is very much shaping this bit of beach it is managed by people as well so it's a real sort of combination of nature and human management of this bit of beach so conservation working in partnership with the management of the site that's right and the next step what they want to do to stop the sea ever really causing that terrible flooding problem of flattening this beach they want to try to prevent that they need to put some kind of backstop in some sort of last line of defense and there's been all sorts of schemes thought of to do that so maybe a great big war at the back of the beach well the local residents don't want that because it would spoil their views and it would spoil the lovely uh, aspects of this beach but there's been other things uh, that have been proposed which would be incompatible with the outstanding universal value so the environmental side of things so coming to a compromise is always the key and in this case it's actually using rock armor but in a way you might not have seen it used before so around West Bay there are these big piles of rock called rock armor protecting different parts of the uh, seafront here they're actually going to use some of that and bury it in the beach itself Wow so yeah so if you came here you wouldn't be able to see it but in those times when the fierce storm comes in and starts to take the beach away it would at some point reach a point where it hits that rock yes. armour yeah. and can't go any further yeah. so it can't flood West Bay in that case. So effectively the power of the waves is absorbed by that rock armour. Exactly and that's something the beaches are fantastic at doing on their own themselves much better than rock armour actually absorbing all that energy from the sea but here we really need that last line of defence which is that rock armour and our job in that whole thing is to, be, to work very closely with the environment agency and to help them engage with the community here to find that compromise, to find out what that, the right answer is to balance what the community needs and what the Jurassic Coast needs. So an extraordinary story of hidden defences under our feet. Yeah. Talking to Sam Scriven makes me realise what a complex job it is to actually manage this coastline. It's 95 miles of World Heritage Site showcasing 185 million years of Earth's history. And just look at those cliffs behind me, aren't they spectacular in that sunshine? Now you can help us to look after this World Heritage Site by joining the Jurassic Coast Trust as a member. We have three options for membership, individual, joint and family membership programmes. And by joining us, you can help us to look after this extraordinary site now and for the future. Why not join the Jurassic Coast Trust and help to protect and conserve this incredible coastline? Find out more by clicking on the link.